Hi, I'm Rhonda Causey Meyer. I am a 1991 graduate of LSC. I have a degree in English and I'm a real estate agent here in Baton Rouge. And um, along with my lending partner, Jeff, we are going to talk to you about buying your first home today. Hi, I'm Jeff Owens. I'm a loan officer here in Baton Rouge. I graduated LSU in business uh, in 07. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna try to go through some of the steps of the home buying process since now y'all are graduated, congratulations, and moving on to the real world. Maybe it's not right now, but um, eventually as things change, you'll be looking to uh, buy a home. So we have a presentation that I'm going to have Rhonda pull up for us. Perfect. And here we go. Awesome. So uh, this is just the beginning. You know, we don't want to bore y'all too much, but uh, we do want to be informative because there are a lot of questions that we get on a daily basis. Um, here. So uh, we just introduced ourselves. Um, I think right now, you know, there's a lot of, of fear when you're buying your first home. There's a lot of anxiety about what that looks like. So some of the um, fears that we hear about is, uh, number one, I don't have the money, um, but there are a variety of down payment options available for you. Um, a lot of people think they're not ready to buy a house yet because they can't afford their dream home. Um, the best way to get your dream home is to buy a home. And, and what a lot of people don't realize is the very first home you buy, it's not going to be your forever home. It's going to be something that suits your needs right now. Um, it will probably be smaller. It might even be a townhouse, but it will be appropriate for what it is you need right now. And then um, when it comes time to sell that, you will make a little money and be able to buy something a little nicer. Right. Another one we hear is, um, you know, the market's not right right now. Now's not a good time. Uh, we're going to get more into these benefits of, you know, kind of to answer some of these questions. But in our opinion, there is never a wrong time to buy the right home. So um, so the, the first step is really just deciding to buy, you know, knowing that you're in a position that maybe you're not moving in three weeks to another state that you think you're pretty secure in your situation and you're ready to talk about starting to buy? Um, buying your first home can be very emotional. Um, and that's kind of, we work well together. Um, I help you with your emotions and Jeff sticks to the facts. <laughs> um, this is going to be your home and um, you need to make sure it's the right one for you. It's a big purchase probably the biggest purchase um, you will have made so far in your life or the biggest purchase you'll ever make. But that's where we come in to help you to make sure that you're doing the right thing throughout this. That's right. And um, just so she said, you know, I'm, I'm more the rational one. I'm, I'm thinking of it. Uh, what do we need to do to get you what you want? You know, try and take the emotions out of it, but maybe thinking more of it as um, an investment. And so, you know, what that means for the property you pick uh, instead of your emotions more tied into it, which is where Rhonda's gonna help. Uh, I'm more focused on the bottom line and the numbers and making sure that the savings in your budget work with what we're trying to do. So. Um, yeah, so um, you've probably heard people talk about, you know, there are benefits to owning a home versus renting. And um, these are just, some of them, they're probably more than this, but um, you know, one of the first ones, this kind of sounds way too obvious, but um, it, it's happiness. You have a, a feeling of, of accomplishment. Um, this is your home. You can, if you want to have a pet, you can have a pet. You can decorate it however you would like. If you would like to uh, paint the outside, clean a tree, whatever it is, um, it's yours to do with as you please. Um, there are also some financial benefits to owning a home that Jeff is going to tell you about. Yeah, uh, you know, ideally when you buy a home that the house price, is, price will go up. So that's, that's a big key to the benefit to buying a home is not only are you paying towards something uh, that you are creating equity for yourself so that when you 
sell it, you, some of your payments, unlike rent, are actually going towards the principal, uh, but also that the home value is hopefully increasing. And averages show that uh, home values increase in our area at 3%. So um, you can get a lot of money just by staying in one place and letting your home value increase. Um, and then there is tax savings, like there's some deductibles that you can do on your tax. I don't want to get, I don't want to bore you too much. So we'll stop there, but we are going to get yeah. deeper into some of these. Uh, and then also when you buy a home, um, it does allow you to put down some roots. Yeah. Um, you become part of your community and there's a sense of community. You can get to know your neighbors. Um, and then there are studies that show, and this is something that you're probably not thinking about right now, but owning a home is better for children. Once you decide if and when you decide that you want a family, um, it just provides more of a sense of security. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm not gonna stay too long on this chart, but uh, earlier we talked about, you know, the market's not right, or some people, you know, hear somebody's rate is this and somebody's rate is that. But I just wanna flash this chart up there to show you um, since 1972, what rates have done, and, and maybe this doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now on what interest rates are and what that means to you. We're going to touch on that later, but you can see uh, 1981, 16% interest rate, and right now we're at all-time lows, uh, basically, so low threes, and which is insane. So uh, we will get back to that, but now is a great time to, to buy, and uh, you know, so this goes back to looking at your purchase as an investment and using your uh, home buy as it's, it calls it on this slide, like an accidental investment, because instead of just wasting money and paying towards your landlord where you don't show any of that gain, buying a home, you really are able to build it up for value. Um, so... Okay, so if once you come to the point of deciding that you're ready to buy, you, you will hire your team. And by your team, it means your real estate professional, which would be me, and your mortgage lender, which would be Jeff. So we, we don't work for the same company. Um, our roles, we have two very different roles, but we do work together for you. That's right. And we stay in communication through the whole process. Um, a lot of a lot of teams like this, you know, work together often. So we know where we are on each step and which helps y'all out because the anxiety of buying a home and all the questions that you're going to have, that's why you have us here before. You're not Googling to find the answer and you might find an answer that was five years ago, but now the answer's changed. Uh, you're talking to somebody that does this on a daily basis. So um, let's talk about our roles in the team and uh, why you need a team. Um, right. So it's very important as a buyer to hire an agent. I know a lot of people might just, you might pass a house that's for sale. There's a sign in the yard and you can call the sign and you might have that agent who has the house listed show the house to you and decide, okay, well, I, I like this house. I want to make an offer on this house, but it, it's important to have your own representation because um, in actuality, that listing agent works for the seller and she or he will be looking out for the seller's best interest. If you have your own agent, that agent will be looking out for your best interest and will work to help you find the best home for you, get the best price, um, get the most value for your money and um, work with you all the way until closing. Um, so kind of what I do as a loan consultant or loan officer, um, you know, there's a lot of people who are scared to talk to a loan officer. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very hard to, uh, have you, the buyer pick up the phone to talk to me. But what you need to realize is I'm not the one who makes the approval of the process. Um, my job is to get the story on what the situation is and kind of put together the facts to present to the underwriter who is the one who ultimately says whether the loan is approved or not. Um, but it's, I like, I'm going to talk to you about what your budget is. Um, we're going to, I'm going to look over the file, see what program would best, best fit you uh, so that we can get 
you where you need to be comfortably so that you're not overextended and um, really find out what your needs are. And then we would present that to the underwriter. So um, let's go to kind yeah. of the home buying process. So here's, here's a little map. Um, I'll try to go over it quickly of the home buying process. Um, we've already talked about hiring your team that you're going to the benefits of having your own buyer's agent. That's what they have as the first step on this little, this graph. Um, they have as the second step getting pre-approved, but sometimes um, you might actually say that could be step one to meet with your lender. A lot of times you can tell your lender what you're um, comfortable with paying each month and he can work backwards from there to tell you what that total price will be for a house. It's always good to get a pre-approval because certain homes require certain types of loans. So you need to know um, before you start looking and get your heart set on something, you need to know if this house is a house you can afford. You need to know if your loan will cover this home. Um, and it's also, if you find something that's a hot property and you decide, hey, I wanna make an offer on this, and then you go get pre-approved, there's someone else who's also gonna be in love with that house who already has that pre-approval who might beat you to making that offer. So it's very important to um, do that. And I know a lot, like Jeff said, a lot of people are afraid to talk to the lender, but it's, it's a necessity because when you make an offer, you have to send a pre-approval letter from a reputable lender that shows you are able to afford this home. Um, so after we find out your price point, um, we decide what, what are you looking for? Are you looking for a, a townhouse? Do you want a small detached single family home? Um, we talk about areas where you'd like to live, um, possibly how many bedrooms, square feet, you know, and um, there's a lot of places you can go look. You can look on Zillow and Redfin and Realtor.com, which is all well and good, but it's important for you to rely on your real estate agent because as agents, we have the most up-to-date and accurate information. Those sites don't always have accurate and up-to-date information. So normally I set up my buyers on a, an automatic email notification. When new homes come up for sale or there's a price change of, of homes that meet what you're looking for, you, you'll get an email about that. And um, if you see something that you're really interested in, we'll set up an appointment and we'll go take a look at it. Um, then when you decide, when you find something you like, it's time to make an offer. I will look at um, comps, which basically is just, I will look at homes in the area to see, see the price of what these homes have been selling for total price and price per square foot. We do this to, to make sure the home that you like is priced right. And we'll kind of tailor our offer based on those comps. Um, there's a lot of back and forth. Well, sometimes the seller will accept your offer right away if it's a good offer. Sometimes there's um, some negotiation going back and forth, but usually the buyer's agent and the seller's agent can, we're both working for the same goal here we will get everything uh, worked out and negotiate it for you. And then we'll have a contract and your house will be um, under contract or pending. After that, um, we go into, we have an inspection where you have a licensed home inspector go into the home, do a full thorough inspection. And this is really good for you because this allows you to see the true condition of the home. Um, you know, every home's gonna have something and a lot of it, they're just minor things that don't really matter, but there might be something major that comes up that um, might be a red flag to you. It might make you reconsider buying this particular home, um, but we can also ask the seller to make repairs. And usually the seller will accommodate this because he wants to have his home sold, so he'll make repairs on your behalf. And then um, once we get the, um, inspections ironed out usually then um, it's when you kind of go back to the lender mm -hmm. yeah and kind of there's there's a two-part process here because uh, you know she has her stuff that she's going to be working with you on and then I also on the back end have some stuff that I'll be working on so um, it, just importance 
we're going to get more into this also, but when you're making an offer, you know, that's why it's important for you to have a team that we're communicating together because maybe the only way that you're able to buy that house is if you're able to get all the closing costs on the offer. So that's why you want to make sure um, both realtor and loan officer are working together because, you know, if you're, if you're not able to get all the closing costs, there's no reason to make um, a low ball offer. And if you're even at a list price offer, you're still not able to get it. Well, that might not be the house for you. Um, so it's important that she knows that when you're making that offer, because it does you no good to, to win an offer that won't, that you can't buy. <laughs> that you can't buy. So um, I don't want to overlap some of the stuff that we have come in. So uh, securing financing, you know, that's when, like she said, you're going to be uh, working with hopefully me uh, and the importance of getting a pre-approval. So like I said earlier, I don't approve. I'm not the ultimate approver prover of the loan, the underwriter that makes that decision. Um, it's my job to get you pre-approved, um, have those conversations up front on, on kind of what your budget is, not, not just on what we say your budget is, but what do you say your budget is? Because um, a lot of times I might be able to pre-approve you for higher than what you're willing to pay. Um, and then a lot of times also, you know, you want to pay more than we're willing to approve you for. So it's kind of trying to find that happy medium on, you know, what will be able to be approved on as far as us lending the money and then where you want to be um, as far as your your money flow and your budget. So the pre-approval process is really very simple. Uh, you know, I have an online application. It takes 10 to 15 minutes to to fill in the information and and like for a lot of you 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 know you may not have a whole lot of history on on where you are right now as far as employment goes um, I know I didn't when I when I got out of school so uh, but student being a student is an acceptable you know gap of what you've been doing for the last two years all what we're really looking for is we're looking for stability we're looking for um, you know, where have you lived and also where have you worked and it, where you in school and kind of going down that route and um, and what is your job going to be going forward. Um, it, a lot of you may be taking new jobs um, and find, I know when I graduated college, just getting to be able to get paid for working was exciting to me, you know, and I, I had moved eight to 10 different times um, renting around the city while I was in college. And I was ready to settle down. I was ready to, to look for something more secure. So, um, but once you do that application, uh, I usually 24 hours, I'll give you a call back and, and we'll kind of discuss um, some of these things, what I'm looking at, what you're thinking, what you're looking for. Um, and I'm also communicating with the agent on letting them know so that they can kind of keep your home search in line with what you would uh, be looking for. Um, so some of the documentation as you get through the process, and I'll just be quick on this, is usually we're looking for 30 days of pay stubs, um, two years of W-2s. That's uh, Which you might not have right now coming you, you straight may not, out. So. And that's fine. Uh, we do accept school transcripts as substitution mm -hmm. for uh, the W-2s. Um, your tax returns, that's another one of those that you maybe might you, you might not ha have, but that's fine. Um, driver's license, and then two months of bank statements. And I, I know originally we had talked about maybe you don't have the money right now. I know I did not have the money when I was graduating school. Um, there, there are different loan programs for 0% down. Um, also, uh, money can come from family. So if you have parents who are willing to help you out with your first home um, and they're willing to gift you the money, that is perfectly fine as far as acceptable uh, ways to get money. There are a lot of unacceptable ways, but these are these are good uh, options. So um, this is kind of when we're doing the pre-approval, what I'm looking for, you know, how much savings do you have? What is your income or what is your income going to be? Maybe you're if you're taking a new job, um, usually we do have to show 30 days of you on the job and also prove the pay. But I mean, that is a very small amount of time to be able to buy a house. And then what are your debts, uh, debts and also your credit history? Um, so let's just talk briefly on some basic definitions that uh, I want you to make sure you know when you're looking at buying a home. 
so your mortgage payment is going to be combined with different um, these different the principal interest taxes and insurance principal is actually what you owe on the loan so that is uh, you know your the loan amount up front after you put down a down payment or don't put down a down payment the loan amount is going to be your principal so when you see your breakdown of your payment a certain portion goes to principal which is how you gain your equity and, and the value appreciates over time. Um, and then your interest, which is the amount the lender is charging. Uh, don't be mad at me. Remember the graph of when the charge was way worse than it is now. Uh, the interest that the lender is charging for you borrowing that money. Um, and then your taxes and insurance are typically also put into your uh, mortgage payment as one. So that's your homeowner's insurance to cover the property in case of damage. And then your property taxes, which unfortunately we all have to pay. Um, so I know that really step one for uh, new home buyers is credit. You know, um, working on your credit, maybe you have not, no not that you have bad credit, you just don't have any credit. And it is important, most loan programs are going to require you to have at least one thing showing on your credit report for 12 months with no late payments. Um, and that's, you know, we're looking for stability again. So we're going to be looking for some kind of proof that you pay your bills and that. So what would you recommend if someone thinks they have lack of a credit history? What's the best thing to do? Usually the, the quickest way to bump your credit if you don't have credit is to get a credit card. And uh, with a low limit. With a low <laughs> limit. And, and, and honestly, I, you're, all you can really get usually up front is a low limit. Um, if, if you're not able to get approved for a credit card, they do have what's called secured credit cards where you can put money into the bank, they'll hold it as collateral, and then they'll give you a card to, that you can charge off the money that is in the bank. And so that reports to the credit bureaus. So the credit, there's three credit bureaus, uh, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, and that's what we're looking at as far as your credit score goes and what we will approve to. So do you want to address student loans? Student loans. Yes. Uh, a lot of you may have student loans. Um, there, those will show on the credit. Um, maybe you haven't been paying on them because it's not due yet. So a lot of times those will show as deferred. Um, and what we, we do count those as far as debt goes um, against you. Usually if it, there's all different programs have different rules on student loans, but uh, just know that that is considered, um, and but it's not it's not a deal breaker a lot of times. So usually um, you still can afford to buy a home even with student loans. Yeah, and really bottom line, pay your bills and pay them on time. Yeah, because we see a lot of people that can't buy homes. They might have great income, but they can't buy a house because they don't pay their bills or they don't pay them on time. So sure. be responsible. And it's also, even if you're not buying a home right it's now, it's, it it's still, you know, your credit score one day will matter to you. Uh, I know it doesn't seem like it right now, but one day it, because when you buy a home, the higher your credit score, the lower your interest rate. That's, mm -hmm. I can give you a lower interest rate, which not only saves you money monthly, saves you a huge amount of money over the, the term of your loan. So it pays off, I promise, to, to worry about credit, especially now. Uh, that you're getting out into the real world. So some of the um, loan options, uh, you know, different banks may have different, a little bit different programs, but for the vast majority, um, they're all kind of in the same realm. Uh, you know, the one that's not mentioned on here that is very popular in our area is the rural development loan. Uh, that's 100% financing. That's, that's the loan that I hear a lot of people who are first time home buyers ask about because you know they they want the 100% financing option it means zero down payment yes no down payment so that that is very good and also it, it has some really good uh, features in the loan as well that helps save money um, so there's also down payment assistant programs when you're looking at uh, some FHA and conventional uh, if you're a first-time home buyer and you're going with a conventional loan, they will allow you for a 3% down payment. So that's 3% of the sales price that of the house that you're looking for. Um, and FHA is 3.5%. So 
different, these different loans have different qualifying features of credit score. So uh, most of them will go down to a 620. Um, Rural development is currently at a 640. And then just to confuse you more, different lenders have their own qualifications on the different uh, credit scores that they're willing to lend to. So um, that's why it's important to have, uh, once again, a team and somebody who can help point you in the right direction. Um, VA loan, that's uh, if you've ever been military, you may qualify for VA. Which is also zero uh, yeah, down. 100% financing. That's that's a great option, uh, probably the best option there is if, if you're able to do VA. Uh, and then Jumbo, that's, you know, higher price homes. So maybe you're not there yet. And then 203K, that would be a renovation loan. So it's not quite HGTV, but it is, it's an option. And um, so a lot of people think, I think probably one of the questions you get the most is, do I have to have 20% yes, down? Yes, that's a very common myth. People think you need 20% down to buy a home. But yeah. just like he's just told you, there are some options where you can have zero down and still qualify to buy a home. That's right. So um, do's and do nots. And I would say that the list is probably way more uh, bigger than this, but uh, do stay current on your rent payments because that does play a factor. We can use that if you have limited credit history and I can prove that you paid your rent on time for the last 12 months, I may be able to use that as a substitution to prove that you know, you're paying your bills. Uh, continue using credit as normal, stay current on all your existing accounts. A lot of people in your, like in, at this age, you just need to get started on credit if, if you haven't already. So um, like I said, credit card, um, see if your parents will let you on as an authorized user. If you do that, make sure that bank reports uh, towards your credit bureaus. Um, and maybe a loan, a small loan, you know, I, a lot of people, this is one thing I want to talk about. A lot of people will go buy a car before looking to buy a house. And what you have to realize is that's extra debt that we're going to take into account. So if you go buy a car, that's fine, but just know that that might limit the amount of house that you might be able to get approved for. Um, make sure to follow the correct procedure if you're receiving gift money. So that's also why you would talk to your loan officer about where your money is coming from. Um, and maybe you don't need money for down payment because it's not required, but there are closing costs mm -hmm. involved as well. So um, you need to be aware of, you know, closing costs and kind of working back with the agent on maybe we need to ask the seller to help cover the closing costs. Uh, do you want to? No. Okay. So communicate with your team. Uh, do not, do not uh, apply for open, close, max out, pay off any credit card accounts. Remember when I look at your credit, it's frozen a, a, a period of time. So uh, I only know what I see, but whatever you do from there on still matters to the qualification of the loan. Because if, if you get pre-approved and then you go buy a car a week later, well, you're not pre-approved anymore for what you thought you were. And you know there are notifications that trigger alerts to us that where we know these things. So don't go make major purchases after getting pre-approved. Um, consolidate your debt uh, into one or two credit cards. And I think what, that, what that's talking about is your credit is better the lower your balance is to the limit that you have. So if you may be able to improve your credit by moving balances, I don't know if you need to talk to your loan officer on that one. Uh, and then don't change bank accounts or transfer any balances. Just keep things as they were. Consistent when we, and stable. When we last <laughs> talked. Okay, and then it comes time to finding your home. I've, I've touched on this already, um, but you know, we get together and we decide, you tell me what you're looking for and I get busy trying to find it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the same thing, you're gonna be considering things like you're gonna tell me what size house you want, how many bedrooms, where you want it to be, what amenities you want. And um, I will get busy helping you search for that. And um, sometimes um, I, I might, I see a property that I think will work for you, work for my buyer. And that's when I ask my buyers just to trust me and go see it because nine times out of 10, it, it might be something you would have never thought you'd like. And those are the properties that my buyers usually end up going with. Um, 
talked about when it's time to make an offer, I'll go through, look at the comps, make sure you're making a good offer that you're not going to go in with something so low that it will be insulting to the homeowner. Mm -hmm. um, but also if they have the house overpriced, we don't want to pay too much for it. And like Jeff has touched on, if you're going to need help with closing costs, we will have to take that into consideration as well with your offer. Um, so this is just the same little graph we looked at. Um, we kind of stopped at making the offer, getting it accepted. The last two things on this, after, after um, a few days before closing, um, well, we, we didn't mention the appraisal. You will have an appraisal and that will protect you from paying too much. If you're afraid, oh, I'm paying too much for this house, the, you're not going to pay more than what the appraisal says. Um, it gets closer to closing. Um, all this time, the title company has been working on the title of your house and getting everything prepared for closing. Um, but once you get a clear to close, uh, probably five or six days before our suggested closing date, we go back to the house, we do a final walkthrough to look around, make sure all the repairs have been done. We make sure the house is in the same or better condition as it was the last time we saw it. And then finally, um, we get to the really exciting part hmm. where we get to close. So that's when you actually, you go to the title company, you pay for your house, you will sign a million documents it'll feel like. Um, but then finally, <laughs> It's yours. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, so you celebrate. Uh, yeah, that's a good yeah, day. Celebration. And, and finally, uh, you get to own something uh, that you, you know, if you've been renting like I was, and it's it's really gratifying to be able to own something. And so we hope that y'all would consider us if that uh, opportunity arises for you in the future. Um, we have our information here. I think mine may be covered up, but uh, let me see if I can. I don't know. All right. Well, I'll get it to you. And look, good. even if you're not ready to buy a house, but you have any questions about anything, please reach out. If you're moving to another city, please reach out because we know, um, or I know realtors in other cities who will do a good job and really help you out. Yep. So we're not limited to just Baton Rouge. I can still help you with things um, if you're moving out of state or moving to another city. So I hope this has been informative mm -hmm. to you. Um, yep. I hope we didn't put you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and if you'd like a copy of this PowerPoint, uh, you can email me at jeffowens at loandepot.com and I can shoot one over to you. So thank you for your time. Thanks. All right. Okay. Do not let that delete. <laughs> I know. Uh, I mean, it's, it's good. How it's, long was that? I don't know. I hope it wasn't too long. I think I saw that they said 10 to, 10 to 25. I couldn't have been more than 25 minutes. Desktop share. I'm so scared. Me too.